All right, so you've made it to the garage cabinet build part two. And in this video, we're gonna show you how we got these cabinets on the wall and how we accessorized them and customized them for our needs and they're working really great. Now, if you missed the video number one, I'm gonna leave a link right here and you can check that out and see how we made these boxes. But let's just jump right into it. With all the cabinets built, it was time to move all the stuff out of the way and make room for my new cabinets. This gave me a really good chance to determine what I really need in the shop and what are some things that I could let go. I did have to move one of my pipes coming down for dust collection, but it really shouldn't be a big deal to move it over a couple of feet. Now I did put a cleat on the wall just to get a feel of where the box would go and if it was the right height. And I liked where it was, so I got out my level and traced a line all the way across from left to right to accommodate all the boxes. Cutting the cleats on the wall a couple inches short really worked out well because it really gave me the freedom to move my boxes right or left to get them to fit just right without having to get them exactly dead on for each box. After I got all my upper boxes on the wall and lined up exactly how I wanted, I wouldn't screw the top part of the cleat to the wall into the studs as well as through the brace at the bottom of the box so they are permanently attached to the wall and not all the pressure is on the cleat. I also screwed each of the sides together of each box to make sure that they were lined up perfectly. Now for my last box, I did have to deal with this conduit, and if I were to do it all over again, I probably would have just run the wire behind the wall. But what I ended up doing was just putting a notch in the top and bottom of the box, and then splitting the cleat to make sure it fit over the conduit. After getting my top cabinets installed, I put my bottom cabinets in place. And I did end up shimming them all, and if I were to do it all over again, I probably would have put adjustable feet there to make that leveling process a lot better and a lot smoother. I found out rather quickly that my floor was not level from the wall out or right to left. After getting everything shimmed and leveled, I screwed the boxes to the wall and the studs and then screwed each box to itself to give it a nice flush fit all the way across. All right, so my bottom cabinets are in. I got all my doors installed and all squared up. And for the top, a lot of people like going with OSB on the top. I don't care for OSB very much. I don't, just doesn't do anything for me. I was thinking of a phenolic plywood and that can get really pricey or it just really wasn't local to me. So I kind of went away from that. But my local Menards had a UV coated plywood, which is really nice. Um, it's got some protection on it. It's a little soft, but that's okay. It's still gonna be protected. I can even put some wax on this so I don't have to worry about glue or spills or anything like that. And it's a nine layer ply, which is really nice. It's not just a standard plywood. So that was real bonus too. So. I've got some half inch OSB on the bottom and I'm going to screw this to this just to kind of secure it and beef it up just a little bit more and then put my trim all the way around the edge. So with the cabinets installed, it was now time to get cracking on making these perfect. Now I got this idea from Brad Rodriguez and his cabinet build and it was a storage for my sandpaper. Now before this, all my sandpaper was in a big pile in a big plastic tote, really hard to deal with. And this was a great way to get all my sandpaper organized in the right spot so I could actually access it. For the storage rack, I just used two half inch pieces for the sides and then a bunch of quarter inch pieces for the shelves because they were not going to be supporting a bunch of weight. All the pieces cut for the sides, bottoms, and back. I simply glued them and tacked them together. I did have to notch out the back to fit over the back brace of the cabinet, but that worked out pretty nicely. I used a shelf for keeping my side nice and level. I lined that up with my bottom and tacked it together. And once I got my bottom piece on, it was just a matter of attaching my top piece and then sliding all the shelves into place.
as I started to fill these cabinets, I tried thinking about what am I going to use the most? And of course, one of those things is glue. So I decided to make this little shelf to hold my glue bottles that I use most of the time. I used some scrap pieces of Baltic birch for the back, sides, and bottom, and then just some quarter inch strips on the front that will hold the glue in place. After I assembled this, now I did plan for the interior dimensions of where this was going to go, so it was not going to hit anything on the inside of the cabinet, but even with that, I still had repositioned a few times so it would not bind up on the door. After I got it lined up on my door, it works out perfectly for grabbing that bottle of glue when you need it. Now this was my favorite part of the customizing process. So I had one cabinet that I have most of my hand tools in and I wanted to put all my saws on the inside of the door when I opened it up and I thought it'd be really cool to try and see how many I could get on there and make it so it was easy to access, looked really nice and hold all of my saws. I started with a half inch piece of Baltic birch that would fit on the inside of the door and then laid out all my saws on that board to see how many would fit. After tracing out those saws, I took it over to my bandsaw and I cut out those pieces that I would glue onto a second piece of Baltic birch. I made sure to take my time and make sure I went nice and easy to make sure I got all of those angles right. After getting all of my pieces cut, I laid all my cut pieces on a second piece of Baltic birch the same size as the first and then made sure everything lined up proper. First I secured the piece on the left and glued and tacked it down and then I pushed my saw up tight against that piece and then put my second piece opposite the saw against that. These are going to be friction fit for the first three saws and so it was really important that I got those nice and tight. After that I made my way from left to right and made sure everything fit securely. For my two smaller pole saws, I decided to put those on top of my coping saw since I don't use my coping saw much, but I still want access to it. So I put my coping saw in place and tacked a few pieces of quarter inch birch onto that and then put those in place. Now these are not friction fit, but I did decide to use some small magnets to hold those in place, which made it really convenient. I drilled some 3 8 inch holes with a Forstner bit and then epoxied them into place. Now in a couple of the holes I did drill a little bit too deep so I added more epoxy and that tended to level the magnets out. Now the last part of the build was taking care of something I've always needed to take care of, which is my hardware. Now my hardware has always been an issue because I feel like it's always been everywhere and always been super unorganized. I decided to make another rack that was going to hold a couple different variations of Plano organizers as well as a small parts tray. So I took some measurements and made sure to make this rack out of half inch Baltic birch and three quarter inch plywood for the sides because this was going to be holding a lot of weight. I dado the left and right side and then cut the shelves to the right length to accommodate the Plano containers. The shelves had a really nice tight fit in the dados which was great so all I had to do was glue and tack all of them together, attach the back and fill them up. I'd be lying if I said this is the only place I'll ever have hardware but for now this is going to be perfect. Everything is in a nice clear box so I can see exactly what's in it for my nuts bolts, screws, fasteners, everything. All in one spot, all in one place, and easily accessible. 
Now, one other thing I did for this are these little black trays. I love these trays, and I can actually just take these right off the door if I need to, take them to where I need those nuts, bolts, and screws. So I kept my most common items in there and made them really quick to access. Now, the final step was making some custom handles for my cabinets, and I decided to make them out of black walnut. Now, I'm making a separate video that you'll be able to see specifically how I made these and look to that link above. For these handles, I cut some strips of black walnut into rectangles. I ran them over a 3 8 inch bit, taking an eighth inch off in each pass, which was perfect. I don't need a fancy router table, and you don't either. That straight edge on a table will work. After that, I ran one side of the table saw and trimmed off the access. After that, I ran it over my 3 8 inch bit one more time to clean up anything that was left off from the table saw. After that, I took each handle and I put a little round over on the front of the handle and the top of the handle to just give it a nice soft look. So I just hit it with black plane on the front and on the top, rounded over all the edges with the, some sandpaper to soften them up, used some sandpaper to soften up all the edges. And for the finish, I always like using a little Minwax antique finish on walnut. After that, I created a jig out of some plywood to give me a location on my doors. And this worked great because it didn't matter if I was going right or left or the top cabinets or bottom cabinets. It always gave me the right location. I think these handles really finished off the project nicely. So very shortly, I'm gonna have a video on how I made these particular handles for this cabinet. They're really easy to make and really elegant, so be sure to check that out. Also, I'm gonna have another playlist here for, again, part one, as well as other garage build projects I've done that I think will really help you in the shop. So be sure to check those out, and we'll see you in the next video.